Hey everybody, my name is Chuck Black and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing a mountain landscape painting in the winter with a creek flowing through and there's going to be some bright colors, going to be early morning scene, so it's going to be cool. So stick with us, join us if you'd like. We're going to be using golden fluid acrylics and we have a 16 by 24 stretch canvas ready to go, so let's get started. Okay, so to get started, I have a bunch of colors on my palette here, and they are carbon black, titanium white, cerulean blue, primary cyan, cad red, and primary yellow. So what I'm gonna do first, I've got a liner brush, and I'm gonna get some water mixed in with my titanium white and a little bit of carbon black. We're gonna mix a light gray, pretty watered down, and kind of get most of that off your brush just enough so that we could start kind of a sketch and see how dry that is so that's not only going to dry quick but because it's dry we're just putting a little bit of paint down there because we don't want it to mix in with the paints that we're going to put over the top so we're just getting started here so we've got a mountain in the background back side of it and then we're gonna put a couple big old mighty trees here so I just want to get enough of a sketch where I can kind of visualize how this is going to end up looking. Got a foreground we're going to have in the front. A little more water, just keep that gray flowing. And there's going to be a tree line somewhere right through there. And maybe another one that comes down. Right there and then our creek will come across here and we can have kind of a tree line right there maybe some more snow maybe we'll even put an animal down in here Kind of a cool little snow flat right through there. We'll see what happens. Okay, so now let's get something on the right side. You know what, let's make this creek come a little bit closer to the viewer. The way we're going to do that is we're going to kind of widen it out. We're going to bring it down lower, and our foreground here will just have to be adjusted. Just bring it down a little bit lower here. And we could get nice and wide through there. And it gets kind of messy, but our creek lines, we're going to forget about this line here, and we're going to forget about these ones. We'll paint over it. So we're just improvising to get started. And what this will allow me to do is then our creek will come along here and that brings the bank closer. So we're gonna be able to add a couple larger trees. So we're gonna to wanna to put oh, maybe a tree there and there's gonna be a bigger tree there and maybe a couple great big ones right there. There we go. So we got some trees that'll be here, one big one here, a mountain in the background, maybe another tree line somewhere off in here. So we've got a tree line there, one there, one there, and then our creek, of course, that flows back. Okay, so the next thing we do is I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna get out, this is one of my favorite brushes. This is a number 10, scrumbler brush very round brush and i'm going to grab a whole bunch of white here 
Just gonna kind of saturate that brush in white. And then I'm gonna pick up just a little bit. And you know what I'm actually gonna do before we grab the red? I'm gonna take some raw sienna. And raw sienna, rather than using yellow for maybe like the indication of sunlight, raw sienna gives it kind of a nice tone. A little bit of a muted tone. And you'll see what I mean once we get this going more. But right now, we're going to add a couple clouds, kind of going through here, with some raw sienna. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a little bit of red. Now it's kind of a muted pink. And that's pretty strong, but it'll end up being kind of washed away with the other colors we'll add on here. So we're just going to get that on there. And then what we'll do is we'll grab some primary cyan and I'll also grab some cerulean blue and we'll pick up some white kind of mute that out and then we'll flow that into our color, kind of our pinkish color and this really mutes it so I don't like the really strong blues in the sky. So we're going to kind of dull them up a little bit. So there's going to be some blue right there. And some blue right there. Now let's take some white and some red. So now we've got a little bit of blue left on our brush. We're going to mix some white and red together. We're going to blend that down towards the mountain and then we're going to take some white and brighten that up just a little bit. We'll end up probably lightening that up even a little bit more. But right now, got to let it dry. And then I'll use that color to kind of blend everything together. Now I'm going to wash my brush. Kind of dab it dry on a paper towel so we got a little bit of moisture but not a whole lot. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of red. So this is a brighter pink. A little bit more red. And we're going to fill in these gaps right through here. and just kind of fade that away over in this area. And then the top, we want our light source to be this area. So we don't want anything other than this area to be white, at least in the sky. So I'm gonna take this kind of light pink, off pink color, just cover up any white areas as we get further away from this area right here. And there's a couple spots. You can kind of go back and forth. You can add a little bit of this color back off in here. This is a good way to kind of blend some of these areas out, lighten it just a little bit. So I got a little bit of brush left on the paint, so I'm just kind of going around with it. Really just trying to smooth everything out. So that's looking pretty cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to wash my brush one more time. And I'm going to pick up some white again and a little bit of yellow. You can see our paint starting to run down. But I like the paint a little bit runnier. So that's okay. Alright, we got just some white and some yellow. I'm getting a lot of that off of there. We're going to add a little bit right through here. And 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take pure white. I'm gonna just dab some white right there. And I'm gonna blend that out with my fingers. Just so we get some white paint on there. All right. That's pretty good right now for the sky. We're gonna leave that as is and let it dry. And in fact, before I do, I need to cover a little more white right here. You can see I didn't get any paint right there, so just get some on there. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna wash my brush and leave it. And my next brush here is I have a quarter inch. This is just a flat brush. It's actually called a Lunar Blender from Princeton, but it's really just a flat square brush. And we're gonna get some color on our mountain. We're gonna kind of work our way towards the fo foreground. So I'm gonna grab some white. I'm just gonna apply some white right on this area. See how we made this little triangle? That's gonna be where the sun's hitting. So just get some paint right there. And we'll have to use more layers to brighten it up. And you know, sometimes even at the end, I'll cheat a little bit and I'll use some oil paint and take that bright oil paint because it's so much more vibrant. And just add some white in some certain areas, really brighten some spots. But that's a different story for a different video. So right now, let's just keep this going. And let's just cover that line because we're going to want that line to disappear anyway. So just kind of blend that out. I'm only worried about the top edge. So we got some paint on there. That'll work for right now. Let's take some cerulean blue and mix that in. with our white. I'm just kind of trying to get the right blue. That will probably work. So I got a whole bunch. You can see it just sopping on my brush because I want to get a lot on there. And you know that's a little bit too dull for me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of primary cyan and this is very vibrant. We're going to rub that right into our blue and then add some white. Kind of brighten that up. You can kind of see the difference between the two. This is a little more of a reddish tone, and this is just a little more of a, well, primary blue tone. Maybe a, more towards the green spectrum. It's just a little more vibrant. Let's just mix those together. Okay. So let's get that top edge established. We'll bring down that back backside and then we'll just kind of cut the mountain down just worried about that top edge put a couple shadows up in there keep that top edge going though Okay, so now that we have that top edge kind of established, maybe we can get a little bit quicker here. Grab my scrumbler brush again. I'm going to grab a lot more paint, primary cyan, cerulean blue. Grab some white, a little more cerulean blue. Get a whole bunch mixed up here. And a little more white. I'm taking all my white here. That's okay. We're going to use it. Our tree line comes down right there. I'm not going to overlap that. We just kind of fade that out. 
you don't want to leave any white areas, so make sure you cover the spots that are going to overlap each other a little bit here for a while, but we'll fix it. Okay. Now let's add a little bit of black, carbon black, and a lot more cerulean blue with that black. Now we're getting a little bit of a darker color here. Ah, that's perfect. You see how that creates another ridge line of trees that appear to be a little bit closer. So that's perfect, that's what we want. Not worried about detail, I'm just blocking in colors right now. But a lot of the detail can be created automatically for us. So, all right, the next thing, let's take some more black. This time, let's pick up a little bit of yellow and a little bit of raw sienna. Mix that in there. So now it starts to take on a little bit of a green hue. That's perfect. Pretty dull though still, not very vibrant. And see how this all of a sudden creates some really, really cool ridge lines. And look how that already Look how that already gives us some cool effects. And I know that our mountain is really plain and it's really flat. We're gonna fix that, but we're gonna let it dry right now. So we'll get to it. Got our other, other ridge line coming down. Yeah, let's just blend those two together. And we're gonna have to mix a little more color. Black, raw sienna, mix that together. Okay, now right through here, right in here, let's pick up some more raw sienna, some yellow, a little bit of red. Grab some more white up here. Just kind of mix this all together. I know it's looking a little muddy, but I'll show you what we'll do with it. A little more red. I want it to be a little bit more towards the red spectrum. Yeah, perfect. So it's a little bit lighter now. Now as we bring that in towards that white area, it's going to look like the sun is illuminating those trees. And when we add the detail, you'll see what I mean. But for now, we're just going to Brighten it up a little bit right there, and then we'll just leave it, let it dry. Go back to our blue and our black. A little bit of that color in there. We'll go right on the bottom edge, and we'll kind of blend that bottom up into that area. We only want that lighter brownish color to be right there. Let's take a little more black because we want this ridge line to be closer. A little more black, a little more of both colors of our blue, cyan, and cerulean blue. A little bit darker. Let's take some more black, mix that in there. All right. That looks pretty good. Okay. A little bit, some darker area right down the bottom edge of this too. Now I'm just kind of making circle motions and just blending that out. And that's where you'll really see the magic of this scrumbler brush. The way it blends these colors together. When they start to tack up, it'll really blend nice. Okay. So that's pretty good right now, and you can see how we're creating a glow effect right now, which is really cool. Now let's take some more white, and I go through a lot of paint here, so you'll see me, oh, I'm looking for a clean spot, let's put it right there. You'll see me use a lot of paint, 
So don't get shy with it. All right. Dab my brush and kind of cleaned it off a little bit there. Let's take some white and some cerulean blue. A little bit of our cyan. Let's create a snow, snow bank right through here. <clears throat> Get some variations in here. Okay, that's pretty good. Now let's keep that going. A little more blue, white. Okay, let's get one over here. Remember, remember our lines. We didn't. We wanted to get rid of those, so we just kind of, kind of leave them. Okay. All right. Now let's take some of that color and just add it down the corner here. I'm going to wash my brush. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the same brush, but this is just a smaller version, so just a smaller scrumbler. And if you don't have these brushes, you can use a flat brush, you can use a, a round brush. Um, any brush really works. Uh, I don't think there's ever a wrong brush to use. It's really the size that, that matters for me. So don't sweat it if you don't have the brushes that I'm using. You can use almost anything. Okay, so I'm gonna mix some yellow and some white, and I've got some black and blue in there as well. So this is gonna kind of warm up this darker blue. Add some more black. So we've got our big trees here, and in kind of a spotty motion, start adding pine boughs. Got a great big tree. Wow, she's, she's really tall. That'll work. Gotta have big ones out there too. Okay, this'll really create a nice contrast against that light source. Okay, kind of boughs are kind of angling down now. Let's grab, grab some black and some cerulean blue. This is a little bit darker now. It's gonna get some darker shadows as we get down towards the bottom here. And then our tree will have a trunk that comes down right there. So we're just putting in the indication that there will be a tree right here. So I'm going to do that and do the same with up here. We've got a big tree that's going to be here. So we're going to have shadows on the bottom and then we'll put highlights up on top here. So we're going to keep going, doing the same method. And I'm gonna keep filling this in, and we're gonna speed it up so we can save some time so I can show you what I'm gonna do when we get to some details. So I'm just gonna keep using this brush and just kind of blending these colors together. We're not adding a lot of detail, we're just, just kind of scrumbling it in just as we've done. So nothing different, and then I'll slow it down when we get to the next step.
Okay, so what I've been doing is just taking that smaller scrumbling brush. I used a couple small different brushes at, at times, but for the most part, the process was the same. We just blended some darker colors, kind of lower on the trees here. Uh, we put some more of this primary cyan in the snow down here, and we just kept going back and forth. We wanted to make sure that everything was covered, and I wasn't worried about precise details. I was worried about just getting individual areas blocked in and then blend those together. So that kind of gets off a fluffy look right now. Not a lot of detail, but I know you can see the general idea of our painting. So now let's start to add some detail to it and, and begin to finalize this. So what I'm gonna do is take some black and some cerulean blue. And you know what, I lied. The first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a liner brush real quick. I'm gonna mix some white, maybe a little bit of that blue, that black gray. And a little bit of red. And I want this cloud behind the mountain where the mountain is highlighted by the sun. I want that cloud behind there, right there. That's just about perfect. To be a little bit darker so that it really sets off the mountain. We want some contrast between. We want to be able to see the mountain clearly. So I'm just going to add that in. You can see it's just very, very small amount. A little over here. I'll blend that out with my finger. You can see that just helps us a little bit in terms of making sure our mountain doesn't blend right into the sky where we can't see it. Okay. And we still see our, our sketch here a little bit underneath. I'll fix that later. For now, let's work on some details. Show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna got, I have the cerulean blue as well as black. I'm gonna add a little bit of primary cyan. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. Not a lot. Gonna brush, get that on the brush and mix that in there. And I'm going to take a little more cerulean blue and mix that in. So this is kind of an off blue, not super vibrant, a little bit dulled, and just a little bit lighter than uh, blue and black. It's kind of a dark dull blue. So we want trees coming up our mountainside here. And before we do that, what we want to do is adjust this ridge here. We want it to be a little bit darker, but we don't want it to be darker than this ridge here. So let's let's make that a little bit lighter. A little more white in there. Get some cerulean blue in there too. Every time we add white, we have to add a little bit of blue. Okay, so that's a little bit better. That's more about what I was thinking. So let's just mix that blue right through here. And we are using, I forgot to mention, our flat brush again. Just because we can get some precise details going on. Kind of carefully going on the top of our ridge that's in front here. Going up and down. I'm using the skinny side. Just going up and down. All right. Let's keep that going actually. We might lose some of our ridge, but let's imagine we got areas of trees and rocks that come down the mountain here. And watch it just appear as we go. So I kind of know, I know generally the idea that the direction that I want to go with this. So this is kind of a pre-planned, but we're improvising at the same time. So we're gonna, that's gonna look like some trees there. And I know it doesn't yet, but just wait. A little bit there. I'm gonna pick up some more cerulean blue and white. A little bit of cyan, 
mix that together again. And I keep adding more over here. I want kind of a hump in the ridge to come up. So these are trees kind of going up as they fade away into the high country and some of it is rocks but it's all of one color just that off blue. We're not going to add any highlights to these. I want to adjust some of this as we go so we'll have to switch back to our blue. So it's all about going our lighter blue. It's all about going in layers. So we're gonna go from work with the darks and we'll switch to the lights again. Kind of keep going back and forth until we're happy. There'll be a line of rocks that kind of goes through right there. And maybe we'll have one right down there. Kind of angle the brush, use some of the corners, add just a few details up in here. So I think you got a good idea of what I'm doing here and I'm going to go back, we'll take the lighter blue and I'll add kind of some holes through here just to break it up a little bit more. But for the most part, it's all we're going to do. So I'm going to keep going just like this and you'll see me add some lighter blue, maybe some darker blue again. I'm just going to keep adding a few details. The more little details we have, the better it's going to look. And then when we get to this area, I'm going to take my liner brush. We'll grab some white and a little bit of red. And we'll grab a little bit of that dark off blue. Just a little bit. Mix that in there. And that'll create some shadows on this side of the mountain. So these would be the same rock formations, but the ones where the sun's hitting it. And then we'll end up taking some more white and try to set that mountainside off against the clouds. I'll have to add a few more layers to that to make it pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to keep going and I'll slow it down when I finish. We'll get to the next spot.
All right, so that pretty much wraps up the mountain. And I think we are pretty close to having that be completed. And sometimes I'll just leave it and I'll work on the rest of the painting. And then sometimes I'll see something that maybe changes as I move along with the rest of the painting. And I see something I didn't see right now. So um, that being said, let's just leave it and move on to the trees. So I'm going to take some white. I've got some white in my brush. And I'm going to mix some black into that. Pretty dark. And then I'm going to grab some primary cyan and cerulean blue and mix that into the black. I know we got quite a mess on the palette, but well, that's okay. I'm going to use this flat brush and I'm using the straight edge, the skinny edge, and then downward motions. Creating the indication of some trees. And when we get down lower, kind of break it up. A couple horizontal, maybe some bushes, some rocks. You see how that starts to look like the hills coming towards you as you break it up lower and lower. A couple right by the bank here, the, the creek. Okay, now let's take some white, some raw sienna. And this is going to mix into our blue. We're going to take a little bit of primary yellow. So we get a little bit of a green, a little more white. Let's brighten that up a little bit. Perfect. We're going to finalize the top of this ridge. Now I want it to be a little bit higher, so I'm going to go kind of right across here. All right. Yeah, a couple down low. Again, you want to break it up just like the black. You want to break up this light color as you go lower too. Let's do a couple. So I'm going to just set some lines up here. And then I'm going to turn it horizontal. Just kind of go back and forth, make some branches on that. On all those little trees. And now that to me is starting to look a lot better. All right, let's go back to that darker color. Let's get kind of an in-between, mix a little bit half and half, and a little bit more blue. And we just gotta fill in this area right here. All right. Perfect. I'm going to wash my brush. And the next thing that we're going to work on, so we're going to keep doing the trees just like that. So that's kind of the process. I'm going to keep doing the same thing over here. And then I'm also going to work on some of the snow. And what I'm going to do with the snow, so I'm going to add some highlights. So this is primary cyan and white. Very bright. I 
That's too bright, so let's take some more primary cyan, a little bit of the cerulean blue. There we go. I'm using kind of an, an angle, I'm just sweeping that across. You gotta just experiment with the angle of your brush. Just kind of see what you like. It's all about how you perceive things and so I am constantly, it really doesn't matter again what brush you have, it just matters how you can control them. And I really kind of believe in that. So you never need a perfect brush. These are all cheap brushes because I really wreck them. I go through them quick. So I just learned to rotate them, manipulate how they work into the canvas and You'll eventually get comfortable with a system that, that works for you. So now we got some highlights on the snow. So I'm going to keep doing that and I'll go around a little more pieces of the snow and then I'm going to do the same thing with the reflection and I'm going to pull some of this blue into the white. Then I'll grab some of the warmer colors and I'll do the same thing. And so I'm just going to keep going with just this area through here. And then we'll be just about finished and I'll wrap up a few details for you. <laughs> Right towards the end, I started to switch a little bit of what I was doing. And, and what I'm doing now is I've mixed a cerulean blue, white, well, maybe a little bit of black. And I'm trying to visualize maybe where each individual pine tree might be in all this black. And so I'm just kind of picking some spots. And I'm adding the indication of some snow on their boughs. And this is really going to start to set off, you know, any imperfections when you start adding fine details like this, 
it'll really start to distract from any things you might not like about the painting, um, anything that maybe just doesn't look right. So that's why I like adding a lot of these small, small details, just a little distraction. And they also make it kind of a, makes your painting kind of, kind of pop with that little bit of extra effort. So, as I'm doing that, I'll continue to do that. But before I finish, I want to show you what I'm going to do with some of these trees to really make our sun appear a little more bright. And I'm going to take some titanium white and I'm going to find a spot up here that's dry, take some yellow, mix some yellow into that, a little bit of orange, sorry, red to make a little bit of orange. And we might pick up just a tiny bit of black, just a little bit and a little more red. We are going to brighten some of these parts of the trees that we want to really appear to be illuminated by the sun. So we're going to cover up a lot of that dark with this kind of this off orange color. And we'll do that to all the tops of the trees around here and our sun will begin to appear a little bit brighter. And I'll have to work on, maybe I'll add a little more orange or red as we get closer to the darks through here. So I'm going to work a little more like that. Uh, we're going to work on putting in some dead trees because we want to have a couple imperfections in our painting. So I'm going to take some black. There's going to be some areas. I'll just take this liner brush and just kind of drag a big old tree trunk down. A couple branches. We'll put a couple in here, a couple in there. I'm gonna have one coming out of the woods right there and into the snow. And I'll have another one coming out right there. One laying right there. And maybe a couple pieces of brush and drag that liner brush kind of up and down. Anything that we can add variety to, we're going to want to do that just a little bit. There's all kinds of stuff that are laying on the forest floor, branches that are underneath the snow popping out. Have another branch come down right there and maybe one that crosses right there. And all that stuff will start to play together. A couple sticks right there. So I'm going to keep working on a few details like that. We'll put a couple of right down by the water here. And the last thing that I'm going to be doing too, we'll be adding a few highlights. So 
So we want some of the areas of the snow to be uh, maybe a little brighter than they are. Just a couple. Not too many, just here and there. So I'm going to keep going with this, but we are just about finished. If you have any questions about the process that I'm doing this with, how I'm doing this, or anything on your mind that I might have missed, please be, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to, to give you an answer or include it in a video next time. But for the most part, that's all we're doing, just little things like that. See how those highlights make it pop? And it, I squiggled in some kind of a dull blue, pretty watered down through the creek here, kind of give the reflection of our mountain just kind of split in the water right there. But for the most part, that's just about it. And I'm gonna work a little bit more up here. I'll take some white and I want to brighten some highlights on this big bow. Kind of just smooth out some areas more or less. It's just about getting a few more layers on there to make things appear a little bit smoother. And that will be looking really nice. We might even add some color I can take some orange and some yellow. Along with some white. Get that peachy color again. We want to paint that on the bottom edge of these highlights. Just to give the indication of the sun beating against the, the snow. We're not going to put any more highlights anywhere else in here. And we may put a couple down here just on the foreground to appear that the sun is coming over the trees and just hitting this area. But everything else is going to be nice and shaded through here. So I'm going to go back to working on the snow and you'll see me kind of go back and forth. But that's about it. There's no other secrets. That's all we're doing. Okay, so I decided I didn't like uh, what was going on with that really hard corner in the mountain. So I got rid of that and I worked a little bit more, kind of extended this part of the ridge up and I added another ridge off in the distance and I might need to clean up a couple of those spots, but that's looking a lot better. And I've been going around finalizing certain details. Uh, I, I dulled this area down with a little bit of blue because the sun is probably gonna be up here a little bit higher, not quite that low. So we did that, and the last thing I want to show you is how I can kind of finish this up by adding some glazes. So I'm going to take some red, and I'm going to take a little bit of black. 
little more red than that. And then I'm going to take some white, mix that in. So now we kind of have an off pink color. And I'm going to dip my paintbrush in water so that that's really runny. You see that going on there, transparent. And I'm going to take my finger and just rub that in. You see how that starts to add a little dimension into our clouds. Let's take a little more black and white. So this is kind of some gray color on here now. And we're going to mix that in to our red. So we've got a little bit darker here. And I'm just going to kind of blend that out. I'll do the same, right? Careful not to cover up our mountainside here. A little bit right there, kind of makes the mountain pop. And what we can do is grab some more red and a little bit of yellow, dip our brush in water. This is kind of an orange color. Let's just dab that on a couple spots here. Give a little color. Let's pick up some white and some yellow. Let's just add a couple spots. Like the sun is just kind of escaping through the branches here. And then a couple of these lower spots, just kind of dab them away, blend them out a little bit. we can take that same color, we don't want a lot on our brush, add a little bit of color right down in here. So this is really transparent, very watered down, it's really just a glaze. That starts to give us just a little bit of color. You got a little more definition in the clouds, which I like a lot better. And we might put a little bit more right there. We don't have to use our fingers all the time, so I'm not going to do it for this. A little bit different texture. Clouds take on all kinds of different textures, so you got to have a variety. A little bit right there, though. And I can kind of poke around and smooth things out, but for the most part, that looks, that's looking good. So, let's take a little bit of white and some yellow, watered down again, and let's add a couple highlights in our trees, just a few, right up top here, where the sun is really beaming. All right. Just gives a couple nice effects. And it's very subtle, but makes a big difference when you get up close to the painting. And finally, let's take some black, a little bit of cerulean blue, and our primary cyan. Mix that all together. Get some water in there, make it flow nice. And let's add sticks right here. Wash our brush, let's take some more of the cerulean blue and some cyan, mix some white in there. And 
and let's put a little bit right underneath here. Kind of blend that out under each stick just so it looks like they're actually there on, in the snow. And then you might want to take a little bit of white, brighten your blue up, give a little highlight right at the base. And then of course, we're going to want a little bit of snow on our branches. So just kind of dab that down. Right on top. And it's okay if you cover up some of the branches. You want a little bit of randomness in that. And that will just about do it. I'm going to stick with this highlighted blue, add a couple highlights right in the shore right here. Right along the banks. Just make that pop a little more. All right. There. Well, I hope you enjoyed. We're going to call that a completed painting. I'll post a little bit better photo at the end of this. Uh, if, remember, if you have questions, if there's something that I missed that you thought I should cover, please leave a comment below and I will be happy to answer. So until next time, happy painting. And if you like this video, please share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, guys.